first go, I just wanted to, to thank my co-authors. Um, um, we have been working and doing gender work in Belize since 2017. Every year we meet and organize plans for the women in, 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 in Belize. Um, we're also the planning committee um, every year during Fisherman's Month to ensure that women get recognized each year. So I want to start off with a definition of women's empowerment. And it's a multidimensional process that involves transforming ideas, norms, relationships, and structures of resources and power allocations. Um, progress is never linear, and we'll show that today. Assured of free, uh, or assured or free from setbacks. But progress on women's empowerment can be and has been made in most countries around the world. And this is from O'Neill et al. 2014 um, from the development literature. So our goal um, in Belize was um, to inform women in the fishery sector so they can be empowered to expand their rights, their resources, and capacity to make decisions and to act independently in social, economic, and uh, political sphere. Now, we want to recognize in our, over the years, what we have learned is we have to recognize all women in the fishing households and in the fishery sector, directly and indirectly. And we understand that although some women do not work directly or work in the processing plant, they are considered part of the sector based on support to spouse during pre and post fishing activities. We also recognize that empowerment is not something that can be done to or for women. It's something that the women have to empower themselves. So again, I went back to the literature to figure out how best to assess um, women's empowerment. I'm using the dimension of women empowerment by Kibar 1999. And uh, the first thing we looked at was, is there gender equality in the, the fishery sector? Um, once we identify that, we looked at what, was the, what were the women's contribution to the sector? And then we delved more into the literature, looking at the resources, their access to material, human, and social resources. We looked at agency, processes of decision-making and negotiation, sorry, negotiations, and the, and the achievement, what was the impact or the well-being outcomes that came out of our actions. We know that the drivers that contributes to women empowerment is an enabling legal environment, strong female role models to inspire the women, the government NGOs role to provide the support and promote equal opportunities, but also importantly, as I'm always reminded by, my, by Peter, um, he did an excellent paper that said the support of males in community is also critically important. So let's look at the, the different uh, sections of the framework we're trying to put together. And the first is gender equality. We did a survey which, um, looking at gender equality in the fisheries sector, we interviewed over 78 um, females. And uh, we asked them a couple of questions, and it was interesting. Um, when we ask, are men and women currently treated equal in society, 34% agreed. But then when we start to look at who was responding, we noticed that there was significant difference in where fish women were placed on the fisheries um, value chain. So in terms of community members, they agreed that 66% agreed that women were treated equally. But in the processing plant, they're saying women are not treated equally in society. And when we look at the, the discrimination against women, in the, specifically in the fisheries sector, 38% um, agree that there is discrimination. And again, the processors were the ones who were saying that there were more discrimination. A little bit of a background history. Usually when we talk about the women, we did not engage so much with processors, but this gave us an eye opener. And so now we are trying as much as possible to engage the women as much as possible. So these are some of the results. So we concluded that there were gender equalities in the fishery sector, and then we started to delve deeper. Um, so we looked at um, work performed by women in Belize fishing communities, um, and it's 35, the total. And these were some of our results. 
And we note that in pre-activities, 91% um, of the women were involved in preparing meals for the trip or they're preparing uh, materials, um, managing the finances, purchasing goods um, for the trip. In terms of fishing, 51% are involved in the fishing, they catch bait, um, they some are responsible for filling out the logbooks for the mail. Um, they prepare equipment and repair fishing equipment, and they also including in setting their nets, traps, trades, and um, shades. And I think we might be able to merge that with fishing activities. Um, processing 29%, they separated and packaged the catch, they processed the catch. In terms of marketing, they were the ones who were advertising they, this for sale, they were seeking customers. They were doing all the arrangement related to, to the um, arrangement related to, to the sale of the product. And in management, they were sitting on advisory board, attending meetings and volunteering in the sector. So women um, showed that they were part of the entire fisheries value chain and they were doing activities as it, as it related to that. Now, at this point, I just want to, to say um, thanks to we want to acknowledge GIFT. Now, GIFT is the Gender in Fisheries team led by the UWI CERMES, and they provide support to us at the beginning of our process and onwards um, concerning gender, how to do research, what researchers. It's a, it's, a, it's a network of diehard gender researchers across the region working together and collaborating as it relates to gender in, 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 in the Caribbean. So one of the publications and that had profound impact on me was it says identify intensified and focused efforts are needed to advance women's economic empowerment agenda in the Caribbean fishery sector. We need innovation that can deliver business development and enhance income opportunities for existing actors and uh, for the future for the future ones as well. So we need to intensify and focus our efforts to advance women empowerment. So with that said, um, the planning committee or the Belize Women in Six gender team, we, we have initiated over 30 events um, within since 20, 2017 to 20 to present. Um, some of our the work that we have been doing, um, there's national policy documents in place. Um, Belize has a national gender policy, and now we have a national strategy and action plan, a, um, a gender national strategy and action plan for the fisheries sector as well. Uh, we have done quite a bit of research. We have ass assessed um, gender um, across the fisheries sector. We have also looked at women's roles specifically. We have um, done um, and we continue to do more research as we, we seek funding and try to get funding to get it done. Um, one of our biggest events is training and capacity building. Um, we have done 12 events that we have, been, that we have trained uh, women from tour guide, electrical, computer, um, repairs, um, cosmetology, food preparation across. We have over 12 events and 178 females involved in that. Um, through the, and this was done mainly through the MCAP project. We also had um, livelihood support, three support activities, 21 females involved, um, from as small as giving them a stove so that they can do their catering business to supporting women's group in communities in doing tourism activities. For information and demonstration events, we have dealt with climate change adaptation, and we have dealt with the SSF guidelines and identified the roles of women. We have had six women in, sorry, five, six women in fisheries forum. And recent, last year, we had a, a regional women in fisheries forum where a woman participated. And we have ranged from 35 females per meeting to this year, um, we had 81 females. So that's the resources that we have been putting. We are putting the capacity building, we are putting in the legal support, we are putting in the role models. We have the, gov the support of government and the and the and the and NGO support um, to assist women. Now, in terms of agency, as part of the various initiatives, women have developed their leadership and decision making and negotiation skills. Um, the knowledge acquired um, 
through their new roles have also gave them opportunity to participate in collective action and decision making. In other words, they are now formalizing local um, women's group in their community, whether it's informal or in some cases it, 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 is, it is formal. They have achieved greater knowledge of the marine ecosystem in which they live and they work because we continuously try to demonstrate um, at these meetings, these activities, we take them out in the fields so that they can have a hands-on experience. And they are growing and able to influence decisions about their future, and they are confident and willing to participate no, um, in decision and in decision making. What we have achieved, women are confident, they're self-sufficient, they are resourceful in their roles, and many of them have started Facebook pages for marketing. They have advocated and participated in the development of issues, specific management plans. They have participated and led community development activities. They have been strengthening existing their existing women's group and they are forming new women's group and now they want to have a national um, women's group um, in Belize. They have been able to expand their small businesses and they have been participating and presenting at international and regional forum. But we have more work to do. Um, access and acceptance is still a, a problem. Um, we see that 67% of females believe that men and women are e have equal access that is related to technical services, training, and other capacity um, development. We still need to do a lot more capacity building with our women. 54% um, of women believe that um, they do not have access to credit. Again, we have to sit with the, the banks again. The banks are still asking um, for support. Um, where is your husband? or who a male can a male come and sign for these loans and so we have a lot more work to do on that um women they sir agreed that they would like to perform other tasks so now that we have started this 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 work um they have the first thing that we did was to ensure that all of them were registered we heard from ian earlier um where he said that there are small percentage four percent of the the fishers were female one of the things that we had a similar um, number as well um, and one of the things that we realized is that the women were afraid to come out and register and license and what was the first thing that we did we tried to encourage women as much as possible to register as local fishers now that they are registered now they're telling us okay we see that we don't want we can be more than just a a fish scaler, we can own a vessel, and that is now what we want to do. And so the, the, the constant building is always there. The Fisher Folk Organization to provide benefits um, for their members, such as access, they do that, the, the cooperatives here, and we just want access for our women. And of course, the acceptance is the support from communities and their organizations. At this point, we're asking um, Adeli to present the, the, the video that we did um, during the Regional Women in Fisheries Forum. And I just wanted you to hear from our women for what it is that they're contributing to this sector. I'm Shailene Berry, Ayafa 2022 champion living in Jamaica. Hi, my name is Melissa Tate, the Ayafa champion from Barbados. My name is Diane, this is my sister. Hi, I am Sylvia. Together we've been in the fishing industry for 69 years. Why do we do what we do? We come from a fishing family. Why I do what I do as a fisherwoman is to provide and sustain for my family. It's something that I love doing. Keep my kids, pay school fees, take care of my family when I can. And to save, because that's most important, to save have something there in case of emergency. My name is Paola Coleman. I'm 29 years old. I have an associate degree, but I'm a full-time fisherwoman. I help to bring an income home and also finance myself throughout school. So I am a degree holder of a bachelor's degree in philosophy and political science because of the earnings that came from fisheries. The greatest challenge of being a woman in fishing is that we are really underestimated in the knowledge that we know about the sea. I, my greatest challenge right now is marketing and the value added on my product, fish. One challenge that I face in the fishing industry is gaining access to training. Fishing can be challenging, but there, we always find a way home.
I realized over the years that fisher folk have been somewhat marginalized and they lack inner strength. They need to know how important they are. In the future, I would like to see more women that belong to the fishing family. I would like to see that those women who are engaged in the fishing industry to be recognized and not overlooked. More women engage in producing value-added products in the industry for better income so that we can support our families. Looking into the future, it is time for women to not be ignored. So come on ladies, let's continue to do our part in fisheries and provide for our household and our families. Okay, thank you very much. That was very informative. As you said, there is a way to go, but th there is some evidence that there is some perseverance that, that is needed to make further progress and that there has indeed been progress in the region. Thank you very much for taking the time to share that information rich presentation. I want to congratulate everyone who has um, uh, put all the efforts to uh, put together that video in terms of women contribution to fisheries. I think that um, that it's um, it needs to be recognized um, throughout the region and especially here in Belize. And th this is where the point I, I'd like to make um, in terms of Belizean fisher folks, fishermen um, and their spouses, their wives. Um, one of the things that I would like to see happening perhaps not just here in Belize, but in other areas in the Caribbean, is um, the the women, the, the wives of these uh, fishers, uh, becoming more involved in the in the affairs of the, the fishing industry. I think that there is a, a opportunity to um, for them to become more involved, um, not just in the post harvest activities, um, but but also in the in the political um, aspects of it, the social aspects of it. And uh, by that, what I mean really is that if you look at what is happening in, in, in Belize as we speak, we have two organizations that um, to some extent represent fishers. Um, the, 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 the first, um, which is, the, which is an, an umbrella organization of the fishermen uh, cooperatives, the BFCA, is, is the one that it has more uh, credibility um, because these are the uh, fishermen cooperatives represent the, the larger portion of the active um, uh, fishers in Belize. And what I want to say is that even though we have these um, umbrella organizations, we don't see, or at least from, from, from where I sit as a, as a government, employees of the fishers department, I don't see the strength and unity of fishers um, speaking in one voice and defending their interests. Um, and, and that is across the value chain. Um, and what I would like to see happening is, is their, their spouses, their wives, so providing additional support to fishers because in, in general, I will tell you that the fisher folk in Belize um, don't speak a lot. They, they don't tend to to express their opinion their, uh, and make recommendations as they as they should. And I think their wives, um, their spouses, um, would be um, good good persons uh, through which these um, opinions and recommendations could be put forward, not just to the government, but to to the cooperatives themselves um, and to other organizations. Uh, which um, the fisher belongs to, or that have an, an, an interest in, in the fishing industry. So basically what I want to say in a nutshell is that Belizean women, and particularly those that are um, the wives and spouses of our fisher folks, uh, need to become more involved in the affairs of, the, of their 
husbands um, it, as it relates in the fishing industry. I know that they can contribute more. I know that they can do more. Um, but I, I think the bottom line is that there is a need for, for additional organization of the, the women and perhaps maybe uh, uh, um, an organization representing this dispose the wives and spouses of um of fishers or fishermen uh, an association of that nature at the national scale would uh, would um would be very helpful that is my point lesser thank you